Hi. Hi. You're great. You're alive. You're here. So I'd like to offer some questions we need to be asking about AI and compassion, and emphasizing some because there are a lot of questions, and I don't want to be presumptuous to say these are all the questions. There are many, many questions, but some of the questions. So let's begin with a basic question. Which is what is your intention for being here or online right now? And I know that you've already discussed this, so this is great. We've already covered this part. You already have a sense of why you're here today, your intention. And now let's expand the question: What intention, what intentions and values do you wish to live by in your work, in your life, in your relationships? Moment and check in. What are the values? What are the intentions? Because really, values and intentions are the core principles, are the guiding lights that drive how we show up and what we create. But then now consider: What are you optimizing for? What are you optimizing for? It's not a trick question. It's quite common that maybe we have values that are noble and and、um, we want to live by. For example, we want to have kindness and connection, but we end up actually optimizing for recognition, receiving recognition, and we end up spending all of our time working and being stressed out and overworked and and short fused and and not connecting with anyone. So, what are you optimizing for? So it's very important for every single one of us to ask all the time: What are we optimizing for? And this is actually the alignment problem. Yes, there's an alignment problem that you've talked about that that we will talk about later, I'm sure, today, regarding AI. But there's also an alignment problem that has been studied by various psychologists, including the Nobel Prize-winning、uh, psychologist Daniel Kahneman, which is us as humans: We have a An alignment problem. We have a discrepancy between our stated internalized values and and goals and actually behaviors and how we spend our time. And all of us. This is us. This is us. This is not them. This is us. We suffer either from the wrong goals or from misalignment, optimizing for wrong things, different things, wrong things. And we shape our systems, our culture, our society, and our world in our own image, and in turn, they shape us. And the Buddha has said in the Fire Sermon that all is burning, burning with what? Burning with the fire of greed, fire of hate, fire of ignorance. And these are the forces of all the ills in the world. And as Bhikkhu Bodhi, the eminent Buddhist monk and scholar. Has said, these exist not only as motives in individual minds, but as forces that energize colossal social systems spread out over the world, touching virtually everyone. Thus, they are now much more malignant than ever before. And this was 2012, really before the the age of the new age of AI. So the opposing forces of greed, hate, and ignorance, the roots of the Ills in the world, and their opposites: generosity, love, care, wisdom. And I want to propose that true compassion really requires all three. You need to have generosity of spirit. You need to have care, love. You need to have wisdom, know how to act. So these are required for compassionate action in the world. And love and compassion are necessities. We need them. Humanity cannot survive. We cannot survive without compassion. And and the Dalai Lama said this in 1998. This is 25 years ago, right? This is again. This was during the winter of AI. And instantly, actually, that's the year I finished my dissertation at Berkeley in deep nets and ASR in automatic speech recognition during the winter of AI. I'm dating myself. I was five years old.、Um, <laughs> So, so now we need compassion. Of course, we need compassion. We, this world, our world has so many problems already. If you might be familiar, if you've seen the 
SDGs, um, Sustainable Development Goals, that the United Nations has set for our world, for every country, we're not doing so well. We're not doing so well. No poverty, no hunger, climate action, etc. We're not doing so well. We really do need compassion. And now, to this, add AI as an accelerator. So a friend this weekend mentioned this metaphor, which I loved, and I wanted to see what um, Dolly thought as, as a way to, to visualize it. So AI now is akin to taking a rocket ship and strapping it to a broken ship and putting it into the space. So whatever values we intentionally or inadvertently optimize for, they become multiplied by orders of magnitude. So now, in my remarks, I want to distinguish between weak or narrow AI and strong or general AI, because they're often mixed up, but they're actually two different, um, two different AIs, really. Very important. So weak or narrow AI is defined as systems that perform a specific task, they rely on humans to define the parameters of its learning algorithms and provide relevant training data and ensure accuracy, and they have no autonomy. Basically, everything we have today, all the systems we have today, the chatbots, the facial recognition, self-driving cars, et cetera, et cetera, everything we have right now, this is narrow AI or weak AI. Now, general AI or strong AI or AGI, artificial general intelligence, it's theoretical and academic at this point. So this, the idea here is that these are general intelligence systems that, that will be equal to human beings in their knowledge and um, in multiple domains, and they have, they're self-aware and they have consciousness, and they have autonomy. So we don't have AGI. And, and there are skeptics who say that we never will have that, and there are people who say, no, it's, it's decades away. So let's put a question mark next to that, but let's worry more, I suggest, about the systems that we have today, because there's plenty of damage that weak AI can, um, can have in our societies. So, so quickly, what is compassion? Let's define this. So many different... Uh, definitions of compassion. I'm going to use a definition that we used at Seeker, the Center of um, Center for Compassion and Altruism Research and Education at uh, Stanford. So, so when you're exposed to someone suffering, so to suffering in the world, there are four components to this definition. One is an awareness of suffering that this person oh, hasn't packed the bags, pack bags to go camping, but there is either bombing or war or there is an earthquake. So this person is suffering. Awareness of suffering, the suffering in the world. There's, this is the cognitive aspect, the first component. The second component is the empathetic component. And that is to be moved by suffering is the effective component. To feel the suffering of another one as if it were, it were yours. Not pity, which is like, oh yeah, you poor thing, you're suffering over there. Like, oh, this could be me, this is me. This is the felt sense. And then the third component of compassion is, is a desire, a wish to alleviate the suffering, which is the intention. And the fourth one is responsiveness and readiness to help alleviate it, which is motivational. Now, does the term compassion even make sense for AI? Let's pause and ask that. Well, we have the cognitive noticing, the affective feeling, and then the third aspect, the third and fourth, are really responding. Responding. So, these, so let's consider this for a moment. So, well, yes, AI systems can have um, three and four. They can respond. They don't have to understand. They don't have to feel. They don't have to notice. And I suggest we call this benevolent AI. So, benevolent AI could be created by benevolent, by compassionate human beings. Compassionate human beings can make benevolent AI that address humanity's challenges, such as the UN. SDG, the problems that we have. So this could be benevolent AI, creating benevolent systems. Okay, now let's consider what about 
uh, noticing, well, yes, I can imagine this class of systems called helpful AI, which actually have um, algorithms to notice, oh yes, this person is sad, this person is weeping, this person is, you know, they're, they're, they're emoting um, um, sadness, grief. So helpful AI could be systems that are benevolent and also interact with, um, with human beings. Helpful AI systems. And now, let's put the question mark. Number two, can, can computers actually feel, even if at some point we have AGI, can they be conscious and can they have feelings? I don't know. I want to make a big question mark next to that. So let's hold that with, with don't know mind. So if that is the case, the theoretical AGI, there would be systems that feel. So benevolent AI, helpful AI, and maybe compassionate AI? I don't know. But So let's focus on benevolent and helpful AI because we can't do that right now. We definitely can achieve that. So some questions concerning benevolent and helpful AI. How can we measure benevolence and helpfulness in an AI system? If we can't measure something, we can't improve it, right? So how do we measure? As scientists, we need to be able to measure things. How can they help us develop more compassionate humans and societies? How can they help us be more compassionate? How can it, we ensure that AI promotes well-being for all beings, not just a selected few? What policies and regulations are needed in the use of AI in a responsible and ethical way? And then some potential risks of helpful AI systems. And remember, helpful AI, the way I'm defining it here, are systems that are interacting with, with human beings, so, so they're, they're showing emotion. Okay, is it right to simulate a veneer of care without genuine understanding? Is it right? I don't know. Let's think about this. What are the implications of AI misrepresenting or oversimplifying complex emotions or mis misinterpreting, misinterpreting them? What are the risks of that? Could AI be used to manipulate and exploit people for profit or other ulterior motives? Because if you think, oh yeah, the AI is really kind and you, you develop a relationship with it. Could AI lead to a loss of compassion for us human beings? Because if we think it can't feel and we're interacting with it all day, can we lose our compassion? I mean, there's already been studies with, with kids becoming less kind and less polite interacting with, with computers. Could that happen for AI? I don't know. Could users become, more emotion, become emotionally attached and dependent on human-like AI entities, especially vulnerable populations like children, elderly, and those with mental health challenges? And what are the ethical concerns in blurring the lines between humans and AI interacting with one another? And could, how much could transparency and, and clear labeling actually mitigate this versus um, not, because there's some psychological aspects of, of us interacting with, with systems that seem compassionate and kind or helpful that, um, that actually can be damaging. And of course, for all AI systems, as already brought up in the conversation earlier today, we need to be concerned about economic impact, transparency, fairness, bias, privacy, a host of, of issues, accountability, etc. And maybe very quickly, um, can AI learn to be helpful without being explicitly programmed with rules? And there is some research, now this is my computer scientist research nerdy part coming out and saying, yes, there is some uh, research in some reward modeling for deep learning that with the work of Cristiano and Leica, um, and also helpful, can, can there be algorithms for help, helpfulness motivate motivated learning which are internalized instead of re rewarded externally. And there are some algorithms, again, for intrinsically motivated behavior for AI that have been developed. Okay, AI nerds out there, happy to talk to you about these. Um, so, so I want to end with, as Rilke says, live the question, what are you optimizing for? What are you optimizing for? What are you optimizing for in your life? What are you optimizing in your work? in what you're creating in the world, what are you optimizing for? And I leave us with a blessing. May all our AIs be benevolent. <laughs> Thank you.